Good morning, folks. When I saw this tiny filament rip away from the sun yesterday morning, I thought, hey, might be an active day. Well, that's one way to put it. You are looking at the live internet seismic server, and as if the Quake Watch hadn't proven himself last week, every actively working heliopod on the planet began shaking as the new day began. A powerful earthquake in the Santa Cruz area of the Solomon Islands has hit. There will be no downgrade. Dozens of professionals confirm the reading of 8.0, there are five people dead, but it could have been much, much worse. As the aftershocks continue to rumble, I see the area this quake hit, and luckily, there was not a massive thrust fault. A small tsunami was generated only, centimeters in scale. Interestingly, we had another example of apparent buoy error, a hundred foot swings on a Hawaiian buoy this morning, just like the North Pacific yesterday. Folks were discussing this in yesterday's comment section, the ionospheric anomalies before the Chile quake in 2010. Well, those who have been here for a while have seen me call out the Japan quake in 2011 and the 2008 China disaster for the same thing, electromagnetic disturbances before big quakes. You will remember yesterday, and for months actually, I've been discussing the over-energizing of Earth in multiple ionospheric layers, not just this one. Recently, you might remember on January 8th, scientists claimed that they'll be able to use electricity as a more immediate precursor to predict quakes. Folks, this is 18 months of research coming together before my eyes. Another quake I'd love to know if it was preceded electromagnetically was the April 2012 double Sumatra 8-pointers. When the Croatian Times ran this article four days later about the quake and general shaking in the area, both it and the scientists were ridiculed mercilessly, at least until September rolled around when UC Berkeley and the USGS claimed this event was unique and shook the planet for an entire week. The University of Utah study discovered that the fault lines had been ripped, causing destabilization. I believe this is all connected and it's going to get worse. Pakistan being assaulted by the weather. Homes destroyed, dozens dead and injured, and pounded India too with more mega hail. NASA's Earth Observatory sees the magmatic action in Chile where the scientists are a bit concerned about this volcanic activity. Finally, back to the sun. One hour before the eight-pointer struck, decaying active region 11667 twisted its coronal loops within the beta group and destabilized the magnetic fields, keeping the plasma in place. Accelerated some near to the speed of light and a long-duration C9 flare, and the ejection is predicted to give Earth a glancing blow on Friday night or Saturday morning. Earth is off to the right here on Stereo B. It is noteworthy that just like the last swarm, this eight-pointer happened as a coronal hole directly faced Earth. Yesterday, you will recall a possible explanation for why the big one up north had less of an effect. Look how the magnetic field lines almost block the top hole. Not so on the south, and not so last week. We're going to leave you with some shots of the sun because a hydro flare and solar tsunami follow that CME just to the left of it. If you need a quick recap of all that's going on, start January 29th or 30th and come through today. The Quake Watch has been more than successful, and technically it continues another six days, but I'd like to think we've got this steam out of our system. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.